Everyone's telling you to get into tech, but what they don't mention is that 80% of high paying roles won't even look at beginners. I had to learn this the hard way when I started at 18 years old. I wasted months chasing roles that I had zero chance of landing. It was like every high paying tech job was designed to exclude newcomers like me. And it actually took me over a decade going from software engineer to cloud engineer to senior cloud architect and eventually running my own consultancy to understand the game. And after helping hundreds of people break into tech, the pattern became obvious. Right now, the disconnect is real. Companies claim that they're desperate for talent whilst also rejecting every beginner who applies. Meanwhile, everyone's chasing the same high paying roles that sound great on paper, but have an endless list of requirements. In this video, I'm ranking the best high paying tech jobs in 2025 based on five criteria: Salary potential, learning curve, market demand, whether beginners can actually get hired. And crucially, the AI replacement risk. Let's start with the hottest job in tech right now, AI engineers. And pre-warning, you're going to be shocked where I rank this. So everyone's chasing this role right now and it makes sense why. The salaries are super lucrative, starting comfortably in six figures with experienced roles paying well over $200,000 to $300,000. There's money to be made here. What about the learning curve? Now here is where people get a little bit confused. You don't need a PhD to be an AI engineer anymore. That was true maybe four to five years ago. Today, the landscape is different and it really changed following the launch of ChatGPT in November 2022, which made the ability to build AI applications much easier. If you can connect to OpenAI's APIs and build applications that solve problems, you are essentially an AI engineer. Sure, some companies might want you training models from scratch, but that's a different role entirely. Most of them just want someone who can use AI tools to solve business problems. They need people who understand when to use AI and when not to. Market demand. Every single company wants AI or they need help improving their current AI systems. Yes, I do think they're confused about what that means, what an AI engineer actually is because it's so new, they're not really sure what they're hiring for. But they're hiring regardless because the spend going into AI is hundreds of billions of dollars right now. Barrier to entry. It's getting easier, but it's still a role that requires experience. Companies are realizing that they don't need PhDs or years of machine learning experience, but you still need a breadth of knowledge across the entire application dev stack, which isn't easy and takes a few years to pick up. But compared to a few years ago, the barrier to entry has lowered because companies are going all in on AI and they just need the talent. AI risk. Massive plus here because AI engineers are the ones building the AI. You're not getting replaced, you're doing the replacing. And someone needs to manage these AI systems, improve them, connect them to real business problems. And that's not going away. Now look, there's definitely hype here. Of course there is. And yes, the role Role definition is messy because companies don't really know what they're hiring for. But the demand is very real. The money is real and the barrier to entry is dropping fast. So I'm putting AI engineers in the B tier. It's a solid choice if you're interested in AI and there's a lot of money to be made, but the barrier to entry and learning curve is still really high for beginners, which stops it from ranking higher. Next, data professionals, whether it's analytics or engineering. Let's start with the salary. You're looking at starting around 80 to 100K and then well into six figures as you get experience. There's definitely more money to be made here, especially if you go into the engineering route. What about the learning curve? It really depends which path that you take. Data analytics is actually one of the easy entry points into tech. Three to four months and you're simply job ready. Here you're finding patterns and explaining what that means. Data engineering, that's a different story. You'll need more strings to your bow here because you're building pipelines that can process millions of records without breaking. So it takes longer, maybe nine to 12 months at least. So overall, we'll call it a medium learning curve. The market demand is absolutely huge right now because every single company is drowning in data that it can't make sense of. From small businesses to large corporations, their data is scattered in different places and they need data professionals who can just come in and give them the numbers that matter so business owners can make data-driven decisions and potentially increase their profits. You might tell them what products sell best and when or what type of customer that they serve the best. The demand is real and it's growing because companies that can't understand their data are losing to companies that can. It's that simple. Barrier to entry is medium as well because I think for data analytics roles, it's lower, but for engineering roles, you'll need more experience with production systems and you'll need to showcase real projects regardless. You can definitely get hired as a beginner, especially in analytics. AI risk. 
This is a massive concern right now. AI is getting incredibly good at data work. Sure, you still need humans to verify, deploy, and interpret, but for how long? Another year? Two? Think about it. Data work is mostly patterns. Query this table, transform this column, aggregate the metrics. That's exactly what AI excels at, pattern recognition and automation. The work that data professionals do is at high risk to AI automation. And yeah, the demand is there, but the AI automation risk is too big to overlook, which is why I'm putting it in C tier. If you go to this route or you're there right now, don't plan on doing the same work in a few years as the clock is ticking on these roles. Next, we've got security engineers. That's cybersecurity and cloud security. I'm grouping these together because cloud security is really just a specialized area within cybersecurity. And both are absolutely exploding right now. Salary. Security engineers start at 100K minimum, and I've seen these roles paying over 250K comfortably with just a few years of experience. What about the learning curve? This is tough, really tough, because you need multiple years of experience. You can't just jump into security. You need to understand what you're protecting first. How do networks work? How do applications get compromised? There's so many fundamentals of IT that you need before you can specialize here. Market demand. The numbers here are absolutely insane. We're looking at 3.5 million per person shortage globally. 61% of companies got breached last year. The average cost of a breach is almost $5 million. Every single company needs security engineers. In fact, cloud security has been ranked as the number one most in-demand skill among cybersecurity professionals. Barrier to entry, this is the killer though. Companies are not hiring junior security engineers, and that's because of the nature of the role and what you're doing, and simply the responsibility that you have. They want experience and they want a proven track record, which means getting your first security role is notoriously difficult because the risk is just too high. AI risk. This is actually a huge plus. There's a low risk here of AI taking this career entirely. Sure, AI helps with threat detection and incident response, but you still need human judgment at its core because these threats are constantly evolving and AI isn't close to being trusted without real engineers. Look, the opportunity here is massive, the demand is real, the money is incredible, and you are safe from AI automation. But the barrier to entry is what holds the this back. I'm putting cybersecurity and cloud security engineers in A tier. Amazing opportunity if you can break in, but breaking in is incredibly difficult for beginners, which stops it from going to S tier. Now, DevOps engineers. Salary. You're looking at salary of at least six figures, and as you get more senior, you can make way over $200,000 a year. The learning curve isn't extremely difficult, but it might take you six to nine months. But DevOps isn't just one skill. You're required to learn multiple skill sets with containers, monitoring, security, and CICD pipelines. So it's a lot for a beginner. In terms of market demand, almost 80% of companies use DevOps practices, which obviously looks good on paper for you, but it's not the entire picture. What's happening right now is that companies are hiring senior DevOps engineers. They want at least four to five years of experience minimum. Which brings me to can you get hired? As a beginner right now, it's really tough because entry-level roles are disappearing due to AI automation and tools that are now set up for automated deployments. AI risk, this is also high because DevOps is mostly writing scripts and configs. That's exactly what AI does best. AWS already has AI that builds entire infrastructure from descriptions, and when you consider all of these factors, the role is quickly disappearing, entry level doesn't exist, and AI is quickly replacing what is left. That's why I'm putting DevOps in F tier. Finally, cloud engineers. In terms of pay, at entry level, you're looking at 90K to 110K, even if you have no prior IT experience. If you've got at least two to three years of experience on New Bell, you get 150 k plus five years in 250k plus so yeah there's plenty room of growth what about the learning curve this is actually the fastest path into tech you can be job ready in just 90 days pick aws build hands-on projects and get certified it's not as complicated as people make it market demand in terms of market demand it's really high right now aws reported a global shortage of 6 million cloud professionals and a cloud industry is projected to explode from 900 billion to over 5.4 trillion dollars in the next decade Everything runs on the cloud. Every website, every application, AI model, database. This isn't a trend. It's how technology works right now. And it's exploding in growth. Barrier to entry. 
of the five roles, this has the lowest barrier to entry. Companies are desperate for qualified talent, regardless of their background. And I've seen this myself as my students have been getting hired despite not having any technical background. AI risk. In terms of AI risk, it's low. To build cloud infrastructure and design cloud architecture is very much a strategic choice, not just technical. Which services should you use? How do you balance cost and performance? How do you design for millions of users while keeping things secure? These are business decisions all about trade-offs. AI can suggest configurations, but humans decide if they make sense for that specific company. That's not changing. If you're someone starting out in tech, learning cloud engineering opens up virtually every other specialization for you because here you're learning multiple skill sets. And the magic of cloud is that it's the foundation for everything. You can pivot anywhere across tech and then specialize in an area that interests you, giving you unmatched flexibility. So I'm putting cloud engineering in S tier, very good pay, lowest entry to Barry, highest demand, most flexibility, safe from AI. This is the best choice for beginners in 2025. So here is the final ranking. S tier cloud engineering, best option for those wanting to break into tech or anyone who's in tech but wants to place themselves where there's lots of demand. A tier cloud security and cybersecurity, amazing money and demand, but incredibly hard to break into. B tier AI engineering, great opportunity if you can navigate the chaos and undefined roles, but it also has the highest learning curve. C tier data engineering, good money now, but AI is coming for this fast. F tier DevOps, I wouldn't waste your time here as a role is quickly disappearing and fragmenting into others and there aren't any entry-level roles for beginners. The strategy is clear. If I was starting from scratch or trying to pivot from an existing tech role that I'm worried about getting replaced by AI, I would choose cloud engineering get my foot in the door, then later on decide where I want to specialize. Maybe it's cloud security for big money, maybe AI to ride the hype, maybe platform engineering. The point is cloud gets you in, then you could go anywhere from there. As always, good luck. I'm rooting for you.